Scoop. Colonel. And then Colonel. And then Colonel. Colonel. What am I saying? Hi guys, hope you're doing well. Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Sue Henry, back again with a new video. Thank you guys for stopping over and clicking this video. Welcome, and if you're new here, please consider subscribing. And if you're coming back, thank you for your support. I really appreciate. So guys, I felt like it's been long since we talked about a healthy topic. So today, guys, I'm here with a healthy topic. And I'll be discussing the endoscopy and the colonoscopy procedures. These two procedures are involving scopes that are inserted. For the endoscopy, it's a scope that is inserted through your mouth. And for the colonoscopy, it's a scope inserted through your anus. We're talking about the preparation and what to expect when you are being told that you need an endoscopy or a colonoscopy. So guys, stay tuned for this and more. I'll start by an endoscopy. What is an endoscopy? Do you have any idea what is an endoscopy? Endoscopy is a procedure. An endoscopy is a procedure that is carried on in a minor theater and it involves sedation. For the preparation, what you need, you only need not to feed for at least six hours before the procedure so that the stomach will be emptied and the food will be have all digested and the stomach walls will be visible with no food. The importance of you not feeding is, is the stomach will be, will be empty and when doing the procedure you won't be you won't throw up is it up or out you won't you won't feel like you want to throw up like uh, you can imagine you can imagine how how it feels when you put two fingers in your mouth and you feel like you want to puke now imagine a scope the pipe that will go inside your mouth to the esophagus and to the stomach how will that be you can puke, you can throw up, yeah, of which is not advisable when doing these procedures because it can lead to complications, which could be, you, could, you can aspirate. That's when aspiration is those food that you had eaten, they come out and then they get back to the nostrils and the lungs. And this will, will lead to you not able to breathe well and can bring about some more complications. So during, when doing this endoscopy, what, what is needed of you is fasting for at least six hours. Then when you go to the clinic or to the hospitals, what happens when you want to do the endoscopy will be taken a consent. What is a consent? A consent is you agreeing, you showing that you agreed this procedure to be taken on you or to be done on you. So that's why another thing that is important for this consent is you get to know what is going to be done on you. Because the doctor will get will get you through the consent and will tell you what will happen, what you will expect, yeah, such things. Then you will ask to sign. For consent, it has the patient's name and the witness name. The, there is a place for someone to witness that you, you agreed and also the doctor's sign. Then after the consent is taken, you will be taken to theater. No, you will, before you, you, you are taken to theater, you will change to theater gowns. Actually, this is a, min a minor theater. It's not a major theater, but you have to change because we don't want your clothes to be dirty when doing the procedure. Because when you, you, you a lot of saliva will come out of your mouth when doing this, the procedure. So that's why it's advisable for you to change so that you can have your clothes clean. And the same clothes you came with are the same clothes you'll go home with. That's why it's advisable for you to change before the procedure. Then after you change, you go to theater. You are wheeled to theater, that is. You are wheeled to theatre and this and this is the place that will be cannulated. Cannulation is putting a line, quick a line. People say quick a line, but that's
scandulation or putting an IV line. That will be done. So be ready for uh, an injection. It's not a it's not painful injection. Actually, it's a mosquito bite. Yeah, it's a mosquito bite. But okay, it's it's a must. You have to be given this. You have to be put on this cannulation. You have to be cannulated so that the drug can be given through IV intravenously. Actually, some people usually usually do these procedures when they are not asleep, but it's not as comfortable. I won't advise anyone to do the procedure when not asleep. But for most whites, they do it when conscious. But for for me, I won't advise anyone to do these procedures when they are conscious. After cannulation, the doctor will spray some medicine in your mouth. The doctor will spray some 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 xylocaine in your mouth. I don't know how to call it in in a layman language, but the doctor will spray some something in your mouth so that the mouth can be numb. And then after that, he will ask someone to give you a mouthpiece before giving you the sedation. Remember when you are given a sedation, you'll sleep. And when you sleep, the mouth will be, mm. you won't be able to keep your mouth open when you sleep. So you'll bite a mouthpiece that will be, will keep your mouth open during the procedure. The doctor will give you an IV, an IV medication that will sedate you. After giving you the sedation, after that you sleep and we carry on the procedure. So we get into the stomach, we see what the problem is. The doctor may, may prefer taking biopsies for more investigations. Then photos will give, be given to you. There is no videos taken, only photos that will be given to you. Those are the only things that are taken. Then the doctor may have diagnosed something he will also treat what he diagnosed. Endoscopy and colonoscopy are carried out with a flexible pipe that has a camera at the front. As you can see guys, this is the camera at the front of the scope. It is usually has a, a light that is used to illuminate the inside of the stomach and the duodenum walls and also it's also used to illuminate the colon wall so that the doctor can figure out and can also see what's happening in your stomach and in your colon so guys this is the pipe and this is the camera which has light at the front and that's it and then after after some time you are arousable you can wake up actually when sedated when i tell you to turn you can turn when i talk to you you respond but I can't hear you clearly because you have a mouthpiece that is on your mouth. So that's why you can't talk. But when I tell you, if I ask you if there is pain, you can talk. You can tell me yes or no. Yeah, that's the magic of being a medic. So after the endoscopy, we go to colonoscopy. During these two procedures, the colonoscopy and the endoscopy, your vitals are well monitored to include the blood pressure, the pulse, the SpO2, that shows how well you are breathing. So for colonoscopy, so for colonoscopy you have to prepare. For colonoscopy preparation, you need some, some medication that you will carry home before so that you can use them a day before the procedure and also you'll be advised on the diet that you should take a day two to three days before the procedure and a day before the procedure because when you take this medication they are supposed to help you clean the colon you know what the colon contains the colon contains feces the colon contains the waste product of the body after you feed so you'll be given some some solution that will go home with so that you can be able to clean to clean up the colon and to clean up your system actually for patients who have done this colonoscopy they usually say that they feel like they have detoxified their body with the 
solutions because what it does it's like a clean and cleanse you'll be given maybe two bottles or you'll be given a powdered form that you'll go and mix with water so that you can take but what happens is you take this solution twice the first one will clean and the second one will cleanse so the first one will take at six a day before you'll take okay let's start let's start it well so what happens here you are given two solutions or you are given a powdered form whatever you'll be given then you are told avoid fiber diet yeah fiber diet you should avoid fiber diet or fiber medication john you are also advised to come with a friend or someone who can drive you home because you after these procedures you are not able to to concentrate for long you'll be so drowsy you'll be so sleepy you'll be so like forgetful after the procedure because of the sedation that was that was happening so it's advisable for you to come with a friend that day of the procedure a day before the procedure what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to also eat eat soft food only like mashed potatoes rice and avoid porridge because porridge won't be easily easily removed from the system so when you take porridge and you are coming to do the procedure the following day the doctor won't be able to visualize the colon because there will be patches of you see the wheat the the porridge wheat will be stuck on the walls of the colon so it's not advisable for you to take uji a day before the procedure so avoid porridge a day before the procedure avoid hard food you should only take soft food a day before the procedure so that by the time you are taking by the time you are finishing the medication that you'll be taking to clear up the system it will be as fast as possible by the following day you will be clean so what are these types of soft food that you can eat you can eat rice you can eat spaghetti you can eat mashed potatoes you can eat what else can you eat you can drink some soup and remember to avoid vegetables avoid 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 vegetables avoid porridge and avoid fruits fruits are highly they contain high amount of fiber and we are avoiding fiber in our diet a day before the procedure or two two to three days before the procedure and even a day before the procedure you should avoid fiber so do not eat vegetables do not eat fruits a day before the procedure that is colonoscopy so this is the night before the procedure that's the supper that's your supper what we have talked about that's your supper at 6 p.m so after after you take the after you take your food or your supper your dinner whatever will be you'll have been given two tablets together with the solution to take home with so you will take the two tablets at 6 pm the two tablets at 6 pm then follow with one bottle of the solution that you are given you fill in the water or you mix the water with the powder form that you are given it depends with the kind of preparation that you are given but they work the same so you you follow up with the a bottle of whatever thing you are given or the mixture of the powder form that you are given and then you drink it within 15 minutes drinks you mix it well then drink it drink it within 15 minutes don't drink it like someone who is thirsty no drink it slowly because it can bring nausea and this can lead you to vomiting of which it won't have helped the purpose it won't have worked the purpose out so you just drink it slowly by slowly so that you don't vomit after you take that at 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 6 p.m now the second one you will take it six hours before the procedure before your colonoscopy procedure six good hours before your colonoscopy procedure is when you will take the other solution or the other whatever the other solution yeah that's when you will take so if your procedure was to, let's say your procedure was to be carried out at at 9 a.m 9 a.m 
So what we'll do from 9 a.m. backwards, six hours. You understand? I hope I'm being relevant. I hope you can understand, guys. Six hours backward from 9 a.m., the time that your procedure will be carried on. So nine and nine minus six hours. It will be. Let's say the procedure was to be taken. To be taken, you are supposed to take a procedure at 9 a.m. So early morning at 3 3 a.m. Early morning at 3 a.m. That's when you are supposed to take your second solution. So you have to wake up early at 3 a.m. so that you can take your second solution. And remember after the last one, the last 6 p.m., there was no feeding, there was no water, there was no anything. Even after this 3 a.m. one, you won't, you are not allowed to take anything. You're not allowed to take water, you're not allowed to feed, you're not allowed. Do not take even water, not even water, do not. Because it's going to, to compromise your procedure. Okay, do not. Uh, after that, you, after you take your second bottle of this, or the solution that you will be given, <laughs> but then I forgot to mention, after taking these solutions, the running in your house will be real. You'll be, be running to the bathroom frequently because it's like a wash. It's like a wash you are doing. For the first bottle was a wash and now for the second bottle will be a cleanse or a rinse the second bottle will be a rinse so it'll continue running uh you will continue running to your washroom so be ready when you're doing a colonoscopy because we need the colon clean we need the colon clean and everything passed out so after that after the second bottle the same will continue you'll still the stomach will be running yeah, it will be a lot it will be a lot of diarrhea but it's a diarrhea that you can handle not like a tea it's a diarrhea it's a type of a diarrhea that you will handle and you can manage it so you'll diarrhea until you start diarrhea in water water much my you start diarrhea in water and this means the colon is clean this is how now we will know the colon is clean after you come to the hospital we are going to be asking you how was your night yeah we know uh, the night was rough but still we will ask you how was your night so that we can know did you take this drug correctly is the colon clean <laughs> yes my friend how was the night i'll be so friendly by the way how was the night the night was okay i slept oh my god so you slept so the colon it's not clean but when you tell me you didn't sleep, you've been running up and down, you, you've, like, you've spent most of the time in your washroom, in your toilet, I'm like, mm, okay, so the colon is clean. So you are going to see everything, you are going to, to come out with the diagnosis. So guys, that's the preparation of the colonoscopy. So even after the second solution do not take water do not take anything until after the procedure yeah until after the procedure that's when you're supposed to take something that's when you're supp you're allowed to feed that's when you're supposed to drink whatever you want some tea or anything that you may have carried along with you uh maybe a, a secret that i want i want to share when you're preparing for the procedure is when preparing for these procedures you're not supposed to eat anything you're not supposed to drink anything but i know the hassle i've done these procedures too and i know the hassle the hassle is real so what i would advise you you can have a sweet you can have a chewing gum that you can keep chewing but don't take food don't take water for colonoscopy we put a a pipe a pipe that has a camera at the front the same as the same as the endoscopy it was also a pipe with a camera that was inserted in your mouth but now for the colonoscopy it's a flexible 
pipe with a camera at the front that will be inserted in your anus so that it can go i know everybody everybody learned about human body digestive system in your primary school science it was called science so you know about the rectum the ascending colon the transverse and the descending colon and the cecum i know everybody knows about them so when the doctor puts the when the doctor put the scope and the doctor put the scope inside your anus when the doctor puts the color <laughs> when the doctor puts the scope through your anus he goes into the he or she goes into the rectum to the ascending to the descending colon to the transverse and also to the descending colon up to the cecum and also he he's, he or she is able to visualize the the cecum area and the terminal ilium where then where now the ilium ilium ends from the from the other side of the duodenum that's where we get the terminal ilium then the doctor is able to visualize what the problem is with your colon and maybe could also take some biopsies if any inflammation he's going to treat if there is anything to worry about he'll take biopsies and take them to lab for more investigation for further investigation there is things that are usually explained like you may be told if there is polyps they will be removed what does that mean what's a polyp a polyp it's a just a minor growth that could be in your colon a minor growth just a growth a growth when you turn a pataka growth even colon usually have growth and this is what we call polyp in case the doctor gets inside there and they find a polyp they advise you to to re that we can remove the polyp and that's called a polypectomy and that's a different procedure so in case the doctor finds a polyp in in you they always advise you they can remove the polyp and they will charge you more because that's a different procedure and it will involve more equipment when doing the polypectomy the reason for removing these polyps is because these polyps are the ones that grows or develop to be cancerous so it's good for them to be taken for further investigation so in case a doctor explains this and tells you in case of a polyp they'll take a they will remove the polyps and take them to lab my friend they are helping you because this could be early diagnosed it's not necessary that they be cancerous no but it's good to be safe better safe than sorry okay so in case of a polyp they explain to you they will remove the polyp yeah and that's it for the colonoscopy thank you guys for watching remember to subscribe like share and comment just leave a sweet comment just below here have you ever done these procedures before have you ever done an endoscopy have you ever done a colonoscopy before by the way guys people usually call endoscopy ogd in short form what does ogd mean do you know guys can i tell you can i can i tell you ogd means oesophageal duodenoscopy maybe i can say it slowly so that you can know because maybe i'm saying it so fast the full name of ogd is oesophageal duodenoscopy oesophageal duodenoscopy okay guys so thank you for watching remember to subscribe like share and comment until the next one peace